Not bad. All right, guys, here we go. Episode 45 of Christian, a comprehensive history by Gino Samuels. Samuel, let's get this going, dude. Let's get this going. Sl slowly. Every time, bro. What made, her this, made her this way? Oh, I got it. What's the attraction? <gasps> what keeps us fascinated? I forgot. I always forget that line. This is the story of Christian. Christian, watch the channel. I'm so bad at the race events. Okay. All right. I'm excited. This is this is my favorite part of the day, brother. Part. I have 45. I keep doing this. Like I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. On July 3rd, 2015. Christine's Facebook profile reappeared a day after seemingly being deleted, or most likely, only temporarily set to private. Okay. The post featuring a depiction of her getting showered with pink lemonade emanating from a vagina, which members of the Kiwi Farms believed caused her page to get reported. We were jumping right into that, huh? Okay. Right. Was found to be still present. Okay. On July 5th, Chris right. wrote a Facebook post in response to an article Whoa. regarding model Chrissy Teigen's so-called trolling efforts on the image-based social media site. Chrissy Teigen freed her nipple on his trolling Instagram in artistic style. Okay. Site, Instagram, where how she took she, photos of herself while exposing her nipples to show solidarity wow. for the Free the Nipple movement, Very thusly sexy. violating the site's terms of service. Christine took issue with the article's use of the word trolling, which he specifically defined as trolls and cyberbullies needlessly terrorizing, bullying, blackmailing, hacking, and above all, emotionally and mentally abusing innocent persons, lacking fame or power to the point of mental breakdowns and emotional traumas. Okay. She felt that a more appropriate term to describe her act was standing up to them for her rights. I mean, <laughs> he's not, she's not wrong necessarily. I mean, what Christine is doing here is basically saying like, hey, I think that your language usage is hyperbolic in nature because I've, they went through like real trolling. You know, we do a little trolling. Sometimes I say pee-pee instead of poopy. You know, that's that's the, you know what I'm saying? But that's not quite what's happening to Christian we Christine Weston Chandler. Christine has legitimate PTSD. <laughs> so it's not, but most of us just use the term trolling like regularly. Yeah, I was trolling the guy. Okay. It's not that deep, but it is for them. It is for Chris. Sure, sure, sure. Two days later, she updated her followers with the news that she had made 16 more Sonichu medallions ready for sale on eBay. Wow, incredible. On July 9th, Christine expressed her outrage at the unwillingness of Facebook moderators to remove a photo of her bare breasts, writing that if her bare nipples were allowed to be on the site, so too should the bare nipples of all women without repercussions. Later that wait. day, she made Wait, 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 did they ban that? Right. Moderators to remove eBay. On July 9th, Christine expressed her outrage at the unwillingness of Facebook moderators to remove a photo of her bare breasts, writing that if her bare nipples were allowed to be on the site, so too should the bare nipples of all women without repercussions. Uh, okay. So basically, Facebook's being transphobic <laughs> by not by not banning Christine's nipples. Is that what we're kind of, we're getting at here? Because Christine is a girl, so you better you gotta ban those nibbies, you know. Later that day, she made a post revealing that someone had requested she create a medallion depicting Adolf Hitler, Why? the Fuhrer of Germany's Nazi party. Someone requested Hitler for a medallion, and I have found a number of shameful, misrepresentative fan art of my person. So I decided to kill two birds with one stone wait, wait, in my wait. own words, with help from Spike Jones. What does it mean? I am not a mean person, or anything like him. I like Jewish people, and I have no grief against anyone else in the world who okay. are not bad people. People, in person, are only bad when they exhibit malcontent against other people for hardly a good okay. reason we're on, at the least. We're off to a good start. That is not me. I am a good person. I try not to come off as a scary or bad person, okay. and I do not care for any and all haters to anyone who wishes to do good or such at their own free will and leisure. Oh, okay. In all short, right. I am a good person. I do not like okay. Hitler, nor agree at all with what he did and set out to do. Heil, fart, Heil, yeah, poetry, fart, right in the subscribed. viewer's face, Spike Jones. I well, thank you for the sub and mute that for now. Um, so he didn't. So she didn't make it, right? I'd have said it better. Okay. On the back of the medallion, cool. she wrote a line from the product. Wait, and she it. actually did make it. What am I talking about? I literally watched it. What is wrong with me? Why would you make the medallion? I don't understand. Propaganda song, Der Fuhrer's Face by Spike Jones. Her Facebook friend, Jessica Quinn, commented that she didn't understand why Chris fulfilled oh the God. customer's request. While yeah. Kenneth Englehart replied that if she hadn't made it, then the troll who requested it would have won. In his opinion, Chris turned the- How? What? Tables back onto the troll by making the Hitler medallion while also mocking him as well. The next day, Christine's Facebook uh, profile disappeared. Again. Maybe? I don't know if I <laughs> I don't know if I agree with that, but okay. Again, on July 11th, her page was made public. However, the photos of her Hitler medallion and her bare breasts had seemingly been removed. 
Wow. On the 12th, she respectfully acknowledged the passing of Nintendo. I don't think that Christine has bare breasts. I think that Christine has male breasts. Just kidding. It's a joke. <laughs> oh, we, uh, uh, we do a little trolling here. Four days later, Chris expressed her dissatisfaction passing of Nintendo president Iwata Satoru. Oh, he died? Damn. Four days later, Chris expressed her dissatisfaction with the new season of the animated series Sonic Boom by writing a short post on Facebook. Why? Wh I, I don't understand this. Like, this hate viewing. They're, the Christine uh, keeps saying that, I, they, that they hate it. They hate the Sonic whatever part of it's because of the fact that Sonic has white arms or whatever. Why are you still watching it then? Like, you're, you're choosing to be oppressed at this point. You know what I mean? Like, what are you doing? Three words. Shit. Damn. Fuck. And then, somebody shoot me. Huh? On July 18th, Christine advertised her stock of 10 more Sonichu Amiibo figurines and 10 Sonichu medallions available from eBay. She informed her followers that if they bought both items, she would sell them at a price reduced by $5 each, Whoa. totaling at $70 for a medallion and figurine. On okay. July 23rd, Chris posted three photos on Facebook showing that she had dyed her hair blue and noted wow. that the change did not have anything to do with the game company Sega or Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> maybe that I mean, maybe it does. I wouldn't doubt it. You never know. Um... You're, I think you're supposed to bleach your hair before you dye it, or else the blue's not really going to come out, right? It's going to look like shit, but okay. Hey, she attended her next scheduled court hearing regarding her assault with pepper spray at the game retailer GameStop. Kiwi Farms More user like Ram Spieler retailer. was also in attendance to observe and later report the goings on. He claimed that Chris saw him and acknowledged him as one of the trolls. Wow. He wrote that her mother Barbara and an older woman, possibly her pastoral counselor, Rocky Shoemaker, were also with her. Ramspieler claimed that during the hearing, Chris farted loudly and wetly, following it up with a stress sigh. There was also talk about her voluntary. Well, I mean, sometimes you just gotta fart, bro. I don't know what to tell you. You know, it's never, it's not, a, dude, today in the store, I went, we had, I had a nice on my wife. We went out to like round one and stuff. I farted, bro, and I walked away, I crop dusted the fuck, and this dude walked right behind me. I was like, damn, brother, I feel bad for you. That's a fucking hate crime. It was terrible. You know? It was terrible. It was terrible. Early seeing a therapist. The hearing concluded with another continuance, with the next hearing scheduled for October 15th. Ramspieler also recorded a video of Christine leaving the courthouse. Wow. Why? So weird. This is like obsessive behavior. It's just so weird. Why are you following them around everywhere? Soon after, a woman who wanted to protect and defend Chris from trollsome actions, or what Kiwi Farms members dubbed a white knight, approached Ramspieler and demanded to know. So what wait, is this the f is this the first instance of like seeing what a white knight is, or is this just like them using the term white knight that's already created? Because I feel like there's far too much uh, stuff created around Christian, the Kiwi Farms, you know, Let's Play videos. It's crazy. Doing there and scolded him for filming Chris. Kiwi Farms member Lipador claimed that it was a different person than the one who had come up to one of his field agents in an earlier similar event. Ram Spieler then filmed her helping Barbara Chandler into Chris's car. Later, he learned that Christine thought that he had been arrested for his actions. Also on that day, Chris elaborated that the reason why Sonic the Hedgehog's arm color change was so offensive to her was that when looking at the character from the side, his blue arms blended in with the rest of his blue body, making it appear as if his arms were not present anymore, save for Oh, okay. So the arms were originally white. Now they're blue. Okay. Who? F I mean, it's like so. Who fucking cares? Okay. For his white gloves, she urged her followers to contact Sega and inform them of this reason for why the change offended her so, since she was not able to contact the company herself due to being blocked by them on Facebook. <laughs> I'm just making a new on Facebook July 27th, guy. Christine wrote a lengthy post explaining why Sonichu should be respected and appreciated as much as she is. She said that Sonichu has achieved more than Sonic or Pikachu, who from alone- As much as she is? How appreciated are you, Christine? What? Mouse became a sweetheart, a loyal friend, a lover, and a family hedgehog with great strength and confidence. Sonic, on the other hand, did not settle down with his partner Amy Rose, nor was he always loyal. Chris further complained at Sega for rushing out to poorly executed Sonic merchandise and enacting offensive changes to the character. Likewise, Pikachu was merely like a trained animal, and unlike Sonichu, he did not manage to domesticate himself. Chris added that she spent a great amount of time sourcing parts necessary for the amiibo figurines and constructing and packaging everything by hand. She would get so much glue stuck on her fingertips that she had to remove it by gnawing at it. She stated that her crafts... Bro, can I just tell you, when I was younger, I remember putting intentionally putting glue all over my hands just to peel off the glue. I don't know why that was something I really enjoyed doing, but I really enjoyed doing that. 
I don't know if I'm the only one. I feel like I can't be the only one who used to do that. Elmer's glue all over my fingers. I'd wait for it to dry, and then I would peel it off. It's very satisfying. Are handmade soul pieces that have the good <clears throat> charm and quality that handmade crafts usually have, making them collectible items. Her trollsome gal pal, Kim Wilson, left an extended comment, telling her of the distinction between a creator feeling like people should like their character and creating an interesting, likable character. Kim reflected <laughs> that Sonichu was a boring character and virtually indistinguishable from the many more Sonic fan offshoots that were posted online and recommended- Didn't, didn't, didn't Sonic try to fuck Amy Rose, though? Like, the Sonic Chew? Sonic Chew? People criticize- it's not Sonic Chew. Sonic Chew, apparently. Fuck you, I'm gonna keep saying Sonic Chew because I'm a boomer, I don't give a shit. Anyway, the point here is, uh, didn't he draw them fucking Amy Rose? That's not something you can find. You can find that on Rule 34. Amy Chew? Rose Chew? Whatever that Chris reads on writing by author Stephen King in order to develop her skills in writing. In addition, her friend William Waterman wrote that he loved Sonichu and hinted that Chris could get paid for completing Sonichu issue 11 and praised her improvements in drawing. The next okay. day, Chris, due to low interest, Chris really just needed to implement like a Patreon nowadays. It would have went perfectly well and boom, making tons of money off of like a Patreon thing of a bunch of like weird shit, you know? Like, well, you know what I mean? <laughs> A weird shit <laughs> off of Christian. I mean, off of uh, whatever it's called. What is this shit called? What is it called? Fucking Sonic Show. My God, I can't even speak today. Jesus Christ. What's wrong with me? It's crazy. That's all I was trying to say. Christine introduced a new eBay deal. If one were to buy a Sonic Show amiibo for $50, Chris would include a Sonic Show medallion for free. On the 29th, Christine reported that some of the individuals who were keen on buying her items allegedly got their charges reversed, so she encouraged them to send the payments instead directly to her PayPal account, thusly breaching eBay's terms of oh service. My God, again. By the end of July, the Amiibo slash medallion sets were almost, if not completely, sold out. On August 1st, Christine announced that she had 20 more medallions available from eBay at $30 each. Ten days later, she posted a custom-made postcard made by her half-brother, Cole Smithy, which she okay. sent to his mother in 1994 while living in San Francisco, California. She pleaded for Cole to come back and reunite with Chris and their mother, Barbara. Later that day, Chris posted a teaser image for an upcoming new Sonic 2 character who would be made available for sale on eBay soon. What the fuck is this supposed to be? I'm confused. What is this? What's the teaser? Are these eyes? Or is this a- it looks like a fucking campfire with, like, hot dogs roasted on the fire. I don't know what the fuck this is. She later revealed it to be Blake, available as a limited quantity amiibo figurine. Uh, I genuinely, I'm genuinely ignorant on this, but why do we respect the pronouns of someone who, one, stated that they only transitioned because they believed it would be easier for them to complete their self-proclaimed love quest, and two, literally committed incest against their elderly mother, no hate, just So the first thing, I don't know what you're talking about, because, like, from everything that I'm seeing, Chris swears that they, or Chris, Christine, whatever, swears that they transitioned because they've always felt like a woman and it feels right and they hate men. I think, if anything, the, the... Part of the factor is probably their autism, and then part of the factor is probably their deep hatred for men, causing them to like hate themselves for like feeling like men are the, are the cause of every problem in society. When it comes to like the 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 incest and the elderly mother, this one's like really fucked up. Like obviously, what they did was really bad and wrong, and they need to be punished for that. But like, I think that we also need to keep that same energy for everybody who trolled the fuck out of them, because like they the, if dude like. That, that incredibly traumatic conditioning by trolls, I'm guaranteeing you, has everything to or a lot to do with their identification as trans and the fact that they raped their mother. You know, it, these, these deep, like, fucking trolling to the point where Chris couldn't make any connections and then got close to their mother in, like, a really weird way. It doesn't make it okay what they did. It doesn't mean that they, they shouldn't be punished because they should. But, like, we, we need to keep in mind that there's more. It's much more than just Christine's fault. For everything going on. So you're asking, like, why I respect the pronouns? Because why not? You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's, I, you can think it's weird, but that they seem to be valid in some capacity, their transness. So just trying to be respectful, mostly f just fundamentally respectful to other trans people that might be watching, too. Um, so that's my answer to that. On August 15th, she wrote that all of the Sonic game characters contained within the chip in the base of all the Blake amiibos have been leveled up to level 50. Leveling okay. up could be achieved by playing the characters extensively in-game and making them stronger. A member of the Kiwi Farms noted that she had recently purchased a special device that can make leveling up of amiibos a faster process. Oh, I was about to say, why are you putting this much work into leveling them up? But apparently they're just using basically like a Game Shark for it, I guess you'd call it. You guys remember Game Shark? Crazy shit. Four days later, she advertised the Blake amiibos again, adding that they would all come bundled with an autographed photo of herself. 
Kiwi Farms member, Asper Hess, asked Chris on eBay about the issue of Christine using the name Christian Weston Chandler in the copyright of the products, questioning whether it was a case of copyright theft. Chris clarified that both Christine and Christian were the same person, but she was still in mid-transition and was planning on legally changing her name at a later point. On August 21st, Christine shared a YouTube video attempting to encourage recruitment of the fraternity Alpha Phi at the University of Alabama. She encouraged students to study very good at their semesters at their schools, encouraged forming strong friendships, and discouraged bullying. Cool. On the 22nd, she added that a good reason for buying her Sonichu amiibo figurines was that the characters contained in them would be fully compatible in the platforming level maker, Super Mario Maker. On August 23rd, Christine claimed to be a wild and exotic lipstick lesbian, or a lesbian who exhibited strong feminine traits, such as use of makeup, lipstick, and wearing skirts and dresses. Hold on, what the fuck is a lipstick? I know what a gold star lesbian. I'm just curious. Lip is a slang for a lesbian who exhibits a greater amount of feminine gender attributes, such as wearing makeup, dresses, or skirts. Oh, okay, that's it. Pretty boring. I know a gold star lesbian is like some a lesbian who's never fucked a dude ever. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy, dude? How could you? How could you do that? My wife uh, thought that she was one of those until she met me. Because I'm just a fucking, I'm just a cool guy. Cool guy. Kim Wilson refuted her claim and offered the Wikipedia article for Lipstick Lesbian for reference. Kim said that she did not pass for a lipstick lesbian and was miscategorizing herself. Oh my Chris Lord. did not appreciate her comments and told her to shut up. Kim instead offered to help <laughs> in the future and tell her whether or not okay. to take down questionable posts. Good, good argument, In I addition, guess. Chris changed her gender in her Facebook profile description to Lipstick Lesbian Trans Woman, nice. Wild, Exotic, Femme Female Soul in Male Bod. On August 25th, Chris revealed that six Blake figurines remained for sale on eBay, and to encourage buyers, she would also provide a Sonichu medallion with each purchase, oh. stating that she would not be as nice with future sales of other Sonichu characters. Two days later, Chris gave potential buyers one last chance to buy one of the five remaining Blake figurines. Oh. She planned to create a new set of amiibos of a different Sonichu character for the next month, and wanted to get back to drawing more comic pages, and perhaps earn money from it as well. At the end of August, Christine attended the gaming and anime convention OmegaCon, held in Charlottesville, Virginia. Wow. She dressed up, or cosplayed, as the My Little Pony character who Final Scratch's human form, as seen in the movie My Little Pony Equestria Girls. The costume attempt was possibly the reason why she had dyed her hair blue. Notably, she was also wearing her Sonichu medallion out in public. You know what's weird, though? <clears throat> Christine looks very normal with these people here. Isn't that crazy? I don't know, who, what does that say? Because listen, regardless of the transness, Christine is a bizarre looking person. But if you put that, if you put Christine in a group of other people and you're like, this looks normal. What's that say about the group that, that they're attending? I'm just saying, bro. What are you doing? You gotta question your life. The fuck? <laughs> what the fuck's going on, you know? Held in Charlottesville, Virginia. She dressed up, or cosplayed, as the My Little Pony character, Vinyl Scratches Human Form, as seen in the movie My Little Pony Vinyl Scratches Girls. Human Form. The costume attempt was possibly the reason why she had dyed her hair blue. Notably, okay. she was also wearing her Sonichu medallion out in public, possibly for the Ooh. first time in about five years. She also brought with her her Sonichu amiibo figurine. YouTube user Carbonic filmed a brief video of Chris walking by at the convention. During the convention, she entered herself into a costume competition, which okay. she didn't win. Marvin, the man oh. in the pickle suit on Chris... That must be really hu uh, humbling, considering Chris used to win everything. ...the date with Emily in 2011, was Have also at the convention, inebriated. He witnessed Christine there and took three pictures of her, possibly while taking part in a dance contest or displaying her costume. Huh? Marvin also wrote that Chris attended a game panel as an audience member, and during a question and answer session, she ranted about trolls and cyberbullies and distributed her personal contact card to all the panelists. How are you going to complain about bullies and, and, and trolls and then give everybody your information? Like, I just don't... <laughs> when are you going to learn? <laughs> I don't understand. On September 1st, Chris shared a video from the YouTube channel Watch Mojo regarding 10 types of internet trolls. Bro, Watch Mojo used to be fucking legendary. I remember years ago. Years ago. I used to watch the fuck out of that shit. Every day. On break at work, chilling in my car watching watch mojo videos okay and it's crazy like that now they don't nobody really watches them anymore i mean some of them get views like do your thing be on your grind you know what i mean but it's like crazy 24 million views getting like fucking 16k i mean that's fine i mean i get abysmal views anyway but i'm just saying it's fucking crazy those used to be fucking i guess like how many watch mojo videos like how many how many different you know how much can you really come up with i guess i guess that's really where it comes from but it's just crazy, bro. How times have fucking changed. Told all haters to reevaluate their lives. 
Later that day, she gave her followers one last chance to buy a Blake Amiibo, Sonic a medallion, and an autographed photo in a single $50 bundle. Soon after, she made a post regarding her dance lessons. I have just completed a seven-week beginner's course for belly dancing with Kalima Sikorsky. Yuck. Not only did I learn and benefit from the booty and bosom shake and rotate, but I have seriously improved in my posture with the repetitive practicing of the beginning belly dance what? posture, the belly tuck with untuck, and bosom thrusting. I might be exaggerating a bit. Do not take my words out of context. You all can too learn all this for improved posture and fun dance moves what to exercise say? with. I personally recommend Kalima, because she's not only a great instructor, but her positive attitude and good vibes with energetic movements are positively infectious and delightful. Jessica Quinn praised Christine for her efforts in the activity as a means of getting in shape, and the instructor herself, Kalima, commended Chris's phrasing of the dance lessons. Cool. The next day, Chris announced that she would be moving her merchandise selling business from eBay to Etsy, a website designed for creators of physical media or products to directly sell their items. That's smart. That's smart. I feel like there's less restrictions for the seller. Maybe I'm wrong. ...to their customers. She would continue to sell her medallions, amiibos, commissions, and autographed photos in her new place of business. In addition, she introduced a donation plan to further the development of Sonichu issue 11. According to the description, she would draw one page of the comic book for every donation of $10. On September 5th, after a six-year $10 break, a page? What the fuck? That's crazy. Why don't you just, like, put it behind a paywall? Although I guess people just steal it and put it up on the forums anyway. Hmm. Actually, maybe it makes sense. Maybe they should charge more. I don't know. Christine posted 10 new pages for Sonichu issue 11, continuing on the Sonichu and Roshu Christmas story, which was first started and then postponed sometime in late 2009. She also announced that she would be uploading all of the Sonichu comics so far in the format of photo albums on Facebook, including issues 9 and 10, after some editing and alterations. Oh. A day later... Wait, what was per what was special about those issues that they needed alterations? I'm just curious. <laughs> I don't remember. YouTuber, Dstex, who was a longtime contributor to the Quickie and QB Farms, and also known for his review series covering the Sonichu comics, donated $1,000 to further expand the production of issue 11, what meaning that Chris fuck? was to complete 100 more pages. The donation was, wow. as explained by Dstex, a way to appease his remorse from getting fame from Chris Chan content and to conclude the Sonichu review series on a high note. However, since he thought himself as an executive producer of issue 11, he felt that he could not review the comic in a video, as it would be a conflict of interest. Christine wrote to him privately that she would include his likeness in a future book and sent him the complete set of Sonichu amiibos and also a medallion, in addition to upholding her promise of creating 100 Sonichu pages. Whoa, Jesus, how much money did this person make off of that? What was their name again? That's nuts, god damn. On September 7th, Chris added amiibo figurines of the majority of the main characters of Sonichu, including the comic book version of Christian, in addition to a modern day Christine, to her Etsy page. Both of her iterations were customized from two variations of the character Link from the Legend of Zelda franchise. Later on, she liked a Facebook post from popular user Lizzie the Lezzy regarding an article uh, detailing the boobies. development of a vibrating bra that could increase breast size. On September 11th, Christine shared her flyer advertising her Etsy store, which included a promotional code that would reduce the price of purchases by $10, and urged her followers to buy what they would like before the middle of November to ensure their delivery before the upcoming holidays. Two days later, Chris shared the news that she had found a printing site that would allow her to create physical copies of Sonichu Issue Zero and opened a pre-order page for them on Etsy. Soon after that, she uploaded Sonichu Issue 9 as a photo album on Facebook with some alterations. Firstly, the character Ivy, who was based on the trollsome love interest of the same name at the time of the original production of the comic, was changed to one Yasmin Clemen, who expressed no romantic interest in Christian. However, Chris failed to change Ivy's name at several instances in the comic. In the original version, Ivy receives a vision from God and Jesus who tell her that she and Chris were destined to be together. This vision was now replaced with a black and white depiction of Yasmin being rescued from a vicious dragon by a female knight on horseback. Okay. <laughs> Furthermore, Christine made an attempt to alter some dialogue to remove her previous anti-homosexual rhetoric and called Quickville a diverse city. Also, mention of the name Panda Halo was removed and replaced with Halo Caliber. The dedication to Panda Halo after supposedly dying in a fire in Australia was also removed. This Why? was followed by the upload of Sonichu issue 10, with the ending execution scene replaced with the Asperpedia 4 serving their time in an Amish community, now seen in full color for the first time. In addition, wow. instead of using Christian's blood to eradicate homosexuality and asexuality, it would now instead be used to defeat Nambi Zazis, a play on words of Nazi zombies from the Call of Duty video game series. Chris, how Wow! Chris really uh, made it a little more PG with all, you know, got rid of a lot of the homophobia uh, and... <laughs> <laughs> That's good for them. <laughs> However, more likely used their appearance in the video game South Park Stick of Truth as reference. Despite this change, the trolls Clyde Cash and Jack Thaddeus still died and went to hell because of their homosexuality. Chris later. <laughs> what? 
How do you do that? That's crazy. <laughs> I guess they just felt like they couldn't change that. But okay, I get uh, A for effort, or maybe an E for effort, or an F for effort. I don't know. Taylor left a comment, writing that at the time of the original making of the comics, he felt thrown off and irritated by badly drawn, insulting parodies of himself and his characters, namely the Aspichu comic series, and his hatred of that content caused him to draw his characters in twisted directions. Currently, however, she felt that she was in a better place and could take the good from the bad, which is why she replaced some of the pages. Okay. Also on Makes September sense. 13th, Chris, on behalf of a friend, requested that the group of Kiwi Farms members who are planning to create a new line of Sonichu audiobooks should hold off on casting until the voiceover artist, Paramoltart, provided some samples of his work to them, even though Farms member, Master Disaster, was already set to be the narrator and sole voice actor for the audiobooks. A day later, Christine relayed the message that Paramount did not appreciate the negative opinions held by Kiwi Farms members of him becoming the narrator instead of Master Disaster. She did not state any personal opinions herself and remained neutral in the discussion. Paramount Tart was later revealed to have been a friend of William Waterman, whose leaked private text conversation with a Farms member showed that Waterman was the friend who asked Chris to ask about the narration opportunity, because Paramount Tart did not want to ask himself. On the 16th, Chris revealed that she had created it like really weird petty drama custom punchy sonichu amiibo figurines ready to be sold she added that she was looking forward to autographing and sending out copies of sonichu issue zero Wait, by when did there be when did the i mean the, i just feel like we never introduce a character a sonichu character sonic chu character um that was knuckles around halloween also at around this time chris began uploading custom-made levels for the game super mario maker on her nintendo online social space the meverse on September 19th, Christine attended the Charlottesville Pride Parade and wrote on Facebook that despite enjoying herself, she wished to have a woman friend or partner to cuddle or hold hands with. Kiwi Farms user Lucrid was also at the event and spotted Chris tending to a booth run by the support and assistance organization On Our Own. She was wearing her Sonichu medallion and handing out printed copies of Sonichu issue zero to attendees. After the event, a so-called ween used the email of Kiwi Farms administrator Null to send to On Our Own staff a falsified report of Chris behaving inappropriately with his alleged daughter. What? Since the staff replied to the email, the response was then sent to Null, who wrote back that someone had impersonated him and used his email to make the false claim and apologized for the previous message. Three days later, Christine went to Facebook to advertise a Lego piece called Ami Brick, a specially made Lego brick available from Etsy, designed to hold Amiibo figurines so they could be then incorporated into Lego built scenarios. She then showcased her own custom display platform, which she used to contain all of her custom figurines, showing how she resorted to wedging the Amiibo bases in between regular Lego blocks to keep them from falling. That sounds really difficult to do. On September 23rd, Chris made Sonichu Issue Zero available for sale on paperback directly from the printing and publishing site Lulu. Regarding questions concerning quality of the paper, she reassured her readers that it was to be printed on good quality paper and that she would be making all of the Sonichu comics available for purchase at a rate of one more issue added per month. I just feel like it's really difficult to make comic books or like a different type of paper. Um, I feel like it's not as easy as like, yeah, we use some good paper. I, I don't know, man. I just... How do you use good enough paper for like a comic book? Um, like you know what I'm saying? Like it. Okay, I, I feel like there's no way that the quality is good, especially looking at the past quality of everything else that Christine has. But upon receiving the comic, customers. Know oh, that's punchy Sonic Tree, you dingus! It's like you don't even know the deep Sonic Tree uh, comic lore. Yeah, sorry, dude. I, I clearly I have to watch a deep. I have to watch a deep dive into all the Sonic Tree characters after we're done with this. If that video exists, you know, let me. Let me know and I'll be happy to accommodate that, okay? A considerable blocky pixelation in the printing, likely caused by Christine using images of lower than ideal resolution. Additionally, the paper used was described as matte and of low quality and cheap feel. On the 25th, she hinted that she would be featured in an interview on WTJU Radio concerning the Pride Festival. After finishing okay. the interview, she About informed what? her audience that it was not live, but rather pre-recorded and set to air at a later date. No known recording of it has been uncovered. Soon after, Chris wrote that she would be creating amiibo figurines of Sonichu villains, Count Graduon, and Slawila Ryan. She then shared a concept drawing of how the Count- I wonder what, what Chris Shan would be saying today. You know what's interesting? Like, I, uh, with the Pride- I know this is a little off topic, but with Pride parades, like, I am prob- Like, I was, you know, my wife used to go to a lot of them, and then she's like, yeah, I haven't really liked them as much lately, because they're very- they are- a little there's a little too much her biggest issue was like that there's a lot of groups there like advocating for things i know it sounds so bizarre to say like that but it's like yeah you know you'll see people that are like advocating for the legalization of marijuana 
And it's like weird because you're not supposed to be like celebrating Stonewall and the history of like LGBTQ. And it's like, it's a little bizarre. I was like, yeah, I get that. I get why you'd be like a little weirded out by that. <laughs> um, but like this year, it's like, oh shit, like they're probably going to be, there's going to be a lot of like abortion protest, like, you know, legalizing abortion. I just thought that was interesting. Like, that's probably what you're going to see at Pride this year. Um, you're probably also going to see a lot of people. <laughs> like fucking like almost celebrating abortion in like a really weird way that's gonna make people uncomfortable and probably gonna have like a negative impact on like conversation so that'll be cool to see too looked like in the middle ages before he was ensphered and turned into his current orb form it was around this time that chris started using a 500 dollars visa gift card sent to her for christmas of the previous year by kiwi farms user sonic rainboom wow by tracing the transactions on the card they could see that despite receiving it nearly nine months prior the first payments of it were made at around mid-september and all of the funds were Why? depleted by the end of the month on september 29th christine asked if anyone was willing to offer her a large donation to contribute to the acquisition of a so-called v-string a risque prosthetic undergarment <laughs> which when okay. worn appeared to show the wearers as possessing a vagina in return, wow. she would offer a signed photograph of herself wearing it to the person who would help contribute to the purchase. She quickly deleted the post. On October Sounds 2nd, like a, after seeing the seems, seems like an absolute priority if you ask me, I mean, uh, honestly. Emotional images of the upcoming game, Sonic and Mario, at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games, Chris rejoiced on her Fix Sonic's arms immediately, Sega! Facebook page, since the model of Sonic being used Jesus would mark Christ. a return of his classic tan-colored arm design. She thanked all people who actually protested against the Blue Armed Games and felt good because their protest seemingly produced a satisfying result. Seemingly? Soon after, Gross. a Kiwi Farms member checked Chris's Nintendo account and by chance found that she was actively playing a game. Sonic Boom shattered Crystal. The next day, she made her presence known in a message sent in a Facebook group for amiibo traders and collectors. She let everyone there know which figures she had available for trade and also advertised her own custom amiibos as found on her Etsy page. On October 4th, Christine offered a coupon code for buyers of any of her custom amiibo figures, which would allow them to get Sonic 2 Issue 0 for free. Following up this announcement, she stated that she was considering creating a custom figure based on her personification of autism, but would only produce it if her post received 100 likes. Wait, what happened to Mitch Sonic Chew, aka Asper Chew? That's a really good personification of autism, no? Come on, Christine. <laughs> Gotta be a little more woke than that, girl. What are you doing? In the next three days. In addition, she would donate $10 from each purchase in support of autism awareness to the Virginia Institute of Autism. Chris then copied oh, the message and sent it in the Amiibo Trader and Collector Group. She got into an argument with some members regarding her labeling of her custom figurines as official merchandise. Other individuals also did not feel that her customizations deserved to be sold at the prices that they were. After others uncovered her well-documented past, she was kicked out of the group. Wow. A couple of days later, Chris... They're honestly just, uh, they're just ableist and transphobic, am I right, guys? the post about the autism amiibo and listed the item on Etsy despite failing to reach 100 likes on her post. Without having made a prototype yet, she set the figurine up for sale for $50, at least $10 more than her other figurines. Chris later added the prototype figure for Count Graduon and Slawil Ryan. She also made amiibos depicting her mom and dad, though for the time being did not sell them to the public. On October 9th, she wrote on Facebook an account of an encounter with a possible admirer of hers. I'm typing this up right now to make a valid point. I was out shopping a bit, and there was rain and distant lightning spooking me. Out of nowhere, okay. just as I was getting out of my car, someone from a red car shouts, I love you, Chris Chan. It spooks the crap out of me. I already had a lot uh, on my mind, I love and you, I did Chris not care Chan. for the loud surprise. That's and after five seconds, because I felt offense at being shocked by the scare, I gave the finger as I was going into the store. Oh my God. While I realized it was wrong of me to give the bird, it does stand that while other people do have other things going on in their minds at the time, no one should ever shout at a person unexpectedly without a greeting prior. Had I half the warning, uh, the verbal true? gesture could have received a more positive, less offensive response. I apologize to that person in the- no. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's typical to be like, oh, someone's like, I love you, and you just give them the finger. It's a little bizarre. But also, I could see, you know, why that would be a little bit jarring, especially since, like, again, Chris does uh, have this thing called the autism. So I get that as well. But uh, what an interesting response. I love you, Chris. Fucking instant, what is it, middle finger? It's crazy. The red car for giving the bird in response. On October 13th, Christine uploaded a series of five videos of the game Super Smash Bros., where she assembled her customized characters to fight each other while being controlled by the game console's CPU. One such match included a bout between Christian, Christine, and Christian Sonichu versus Autism. William Waterman complained about the unfairness of three iterations of Christian- <laughs> Against fucking versus Autism? What a fucking epic fight there. Holy shit, that's awesome. Imagine Super Smash Bros. characters could really beat Autism, bro. Find a cure. Incredible stuff. Chan teaming up to defeat a single personification of autism. 
Chris replied, clarifying that the symbolic point of the battle was to defeat autism in the end. On October 15th, Christine attended her next... It's crazy, though, because people get very sensitive if you if you suggest there could be like a cure for autism, for instance, right? Like, I remember making a video. I think I might have mentioned this at, at one point, but I made a video about it. Like, you know, like Elon Musk was like, oh, maybe we can cure autism with like some kind of brain chip or whatever. I was like, oh, it's interesting. I think people should be able to have the um, ability to make that decision themselves. Like, if they want to... Um, you know, and they cure their autism. I think that that's perfectly reasonable for them to potentially do. That's something that they'd like to do. Um, but nobody should be forced. But if that's like an option that people want to make available, I think it's totally fun. People were very upset with that take. They're like, oh my God, you don't need to cure it. There's nothing wrong. But it's like, listen, a lot of people struggle to, to interact with society. So if they chose to, you know, um, do that, and I'm like, you know, that's their prerogative. Scheduled court hearing in Charlottesville. Kiwi Farms members Marvin and Ramspieler were both present in the courthouse. Marvin later wrote an account of what he saw. Barb's aging, thin, kind of frail, might not be very responsive. In retrospect, I don't think Chris recognized anyone. There was the guy he exchanged words with, but going over my notes, it might have been just him being paranoid of someone. There was an old lady behind Chris talking to him a few times. I don't think it was Rocky. Barb and Chris are way too physically intimate. It's one thing to describe their creepy relationship. It's quite another to watch it IRL. They hold hands and Chris is always putting his arm around her and rubbing her shoulders sensually. That shit I do to someone I'd want to bang, not a family member. It's weird. Interesting. I, I wonder if that's like an accurate representation of their relationship. Cause like, see, I mean, like, listen, I don't. I, it's very a lot of spec, a lot of it's speculative, but I wonder if there's some kind of like encouragement from the mom as well. Um, I wouldn't. I don't know. That's fucked up. There was some guy with white hair and a white suit talking to Not Rocky. Then the PD came over and talked to Chris and Barb, with white hair guy and Not Rocky in the row behind them. This is where I heard snippets referencing six months and something something something. I think I heard Chris stress sigh a few times, and I think the PD got a little annoyed dealing with Chris. After a bit, the PD went up to the judge, and they called- It's interesting that like the stress sigh is now like a fucking Chris Chan meme, to the point where people are like, Oh, I heard this, the stress sigh. Like the famed, the fabled stress sigh from, Chris, from Christine Weston Chandler. Chris up. Chris starts getting impatient with Barb. He said something like, Are your ears clogged up? And then, Wanna follow me so you can hear what's going on? Then she got up and trundled up there to a- You think that's the way that like her husband used to treat her? I'm just- I, Genuine question. I'm not trying to be offensive, but I'm just wondering. Company Chris. This says a few things to me. Perhaps Barb's hearing is wearing down. This fits in with her being frail and old. Chris is being kind of bossy to Barb. Chris expects Barb to be his bookkeeper so far as his punishments go. This is confirming what we heard about the Snyder trial. Christine's charge of a class 6 felony was amended down to a misdemeanor and was finally found guilty of her crime. She was to pay a fine of $541 and was given a 6 month suspended sentence, meaning that if she did not commit any crimes within the next 6 months, she would not serve any time in prison. In addition, her ban from the fashion square was lifted. However, bans from individual establishments remained in place. Ramspieler then filmed a video of Chris and Barbara leaving the courthouse and going back to their car. Okay. Hey, thanks for the raid, Buffer Crow. The next day, Christine revealed her design for the autism amiibo figurine, sold for $30. On the 17th, she showed off two available variants of the character Angelica Rosechu up for sale. The following day, Chris announced that she would soon be making her 50th Sonichu amiibo figurine, so in celebration, she would be painting the figure's base a gold color, and the person who happened to buy the 50th Sonichu figure would also receive a Rosechu model for free. Wow. She shortly after edited the post to state that she would be also painting the figure's shoes gold as well, in addition to its base. Later that day, she made another post, revealing that in preparation for the publication of Sonichu Issue 1, she had replaced the Sonic villain in the story, Dr. Robotnik, with another character, and the first person to accurately guess the new character's name based on the hints provided would get a copy of the book for free. Uh, Chris, Papaga, I know Chris isn't a person whose words can be taken very seriously, but... In his prison letters, he claimed that a few weeks after his father's death, Barbara baked him to sleep with her, with him, and and he did. Uh, I don't know how credible that is, honestly. It's hard to say. <clears throat> it's also like it's possible that it happened. It's possible that it's a lie. It's possible that Chris felt like that happened and like is misinterpreting something else. You know what I mean? Like, there's way too many different possibilities. Or fuck, I didn't upgrade that. Oh, wow, I'm really stupid. There's like way too many possibilities. You know. 
After several guesses from Jessica and William, it was William who eventually guessed close enough to the chosen name, Ren Skysor, that he was declared as the winner by Christine, about which he boasted in the comment section to spite the Kiwi Farms. Chris then showed off her design of Dr. Ren Skysor and his evil creation, Metal Sonichu. She later added a comment stating that Skysor's strawberry-shaped head came about through an accident while drawing the character, but felt that the shape of his head added to his overall appeal. She soon after made Sonichu issue 1 available for sale on Lulu, and updated the modified pages of the comic in the dedicated Facebook photo album for the book. She also added two new pages after the original conclusion of the issue, where she shows that Sonic the Hedgehog and Amy Rose, as seen throughout the stories, were in fact Silvana Rosechu in disguise, serving Count Graduan, who wanted to enact revenge against the Sonichus, because their ancestors had enslaved him into the orb he currently resided in. Okay. On October 23rd, Christine shared a picture showing an upcoming page of Sonichu issue 11, telling her followers that she was coloring in new pages and would be uploading them to Facebook within the week. As promised, she uploaded 16 new pages on Sunday, October 25th. It was on that day that she uploaded a YouTube video concerning her Etsy store, her first personal video after a one-year absence. Hello, I want... This is Christine Chandler coming to you live from a house here. Hey, I want to thank... Personally thank everybody on the internet for considered support for my books and works and my figures and whatnot and help me out around here to recover from a whole bunch of the other stresses and whatnot but that's aside but anyway uh they, you're, you're, i just want to let everybody know that donations are greatly appreciated i'll continue to honor my promises as i have stated in uh, my listings on etsy and everything and i'll include a link in the description where y'all can buy a figure buy a book or donate some more hmm. but anyway it's all going good and well just want this is just my little video of gratitude. So, more new content is coming up. Stay tuned between my Etsy page, my Facebook, my Twitter. So, anyway. Okay, everybody have a good and safe day. Thank you again. Okay. The following day, she publicized photos of two new Amiibo prototype figures, Simone LaRoseChu and Silvana Rosechu. On the 29th, Chris made another video, this time apologizing for past homophobic remarks. Marvin of the Kiwi Farms theorized that her recent uploads of new videos were made under someone else's influence, as he remarked that from personal experience, Chris was generally very unwilling to make videos without any assistance or encouragement. Well, I've been I've come to the realization that I should I have another apology that I owe to everybody, especially those that have that definitely know the pages and of my, of my later books that have still yet still months away before I put them on paper publish. But anyway, they uh, were reminiscent and reflective of past homophobia anyway I want anyway you see when I when I originally drew and wrote those pages I was quite homophobic at the time but then when I came out uh, in July of 2014 as myself a lesbian trans woman okay. <clears throat> I have uh, realized that I am part of the uh, LGBTQ community and I definitely felt like I felt I fit in I, I, I really I can't believe it, bro. Like that, what they were saying was true, man. The LGBTQ, there's a uh, they 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 uh, groomed Chris, right? There's always like, oh, there's an LGBTQ narrative to try to like, uh, it's fucking feminize men, blah blah blah, dude. That happened, bro. It's objective proof. Christine Weston Chandler is proof of that. How crazy? How crazy is that, guys? It's the Pride Festival in that same year later. So anyway, I had since uh, edited those changes and changed the con changed the content to uh, away from that, and well, had a cure for homosexuality put in there, of which I was re which was end up what I came back in the future for. But anyway, I changed that to just essentially preventing a zombie apocalypse. Wow. Apocalypse. Cool. You see, originally when I what does the Q was, stand for? I think queer or questioning. I mean, it depends. There's like seven thousand fucking different variations. Just to be honest here. Homophobic. It was because the mislabelings that were put upon me and Sanchu, because Sanchu is definitely not gay. Sanchu loves women, and Rose Chu is a woman, and she loves her man. Okay. But anyway, I'm sorry for my past homophobia. And my but Chris is gay. Christine, right? Like, I mean, that's like you'd be a lesbian woman that's gay. I wonder if they would dis like not approve of the label of being called like gay. You know what I mean? Just because it's associated with gay men. Writing about that in my books. So anyway, I want to thank you all again for your continuing support. Okay. It's it's uh, most helpful, but still 
more help can be appreciated very much. Okay. All right, so thank okay. you all again, and have a good day. On October 31st, Chris posted drawings of Sonic Chu, Rose Chu, and their three children dressed up as My Little Pony characters for wow. Halloween. The next day. Damn, bro. Chris, how are you going to say that you don't want, you want to find a cure for autism, but you support My Little Pony? It just doesn't add up. What do the numbers mean? What do the numbers mean, guys? You can't do both, okay? <laughs> you can't do both, okay? She uploaded another video to YouTube. Hello to all my lucky lady fans. Yes, I just got out of the shower. I feel clean again. Wow. Well, it gets lonely around here in my bedroom. Oh, my God. I feel like I might want to date some of y'all. I mean, we get to know each other. Could you imagine uh, Christine on TikTok? Oh, my God. It would be a field day for a lot of these people. These people will be going fucking ballistic. You know it. It'd be the fucking nut house. Holy shit. It'd be fucking nut house. You know, have a pleasant dinner or just enjoy a conversation over a cup of coffee. See where things go. See how we feel around each other. Yeah, maybe I'll eventually find my sweetheart amongst y'all. Among us. Very good reference. Thank you. I'm open to all kinds of women because you get the whole package in one. The female soul. And the body that can go any way you desire. My oh, lady. Oh my god. Mm. Someone help Straight, me. Straight bisexual lesbian. I'll take y'all on. Because I have, because I'm an overlooked treasure that should not be ignored. True. Or overlooked any longer. One weekend, y'all can visit. Maybe get a hotel room, y'all. Oh. <clears throat> or spend a lovely evening together in or something. Or maybe we'll swing by here. Okay. Well, get to know me. Talk to me. See whether we, see whether we click or not. Okay. Mm. Lovely, okay. lovely times and memories to be shared. And even if things don't work out for the long run, you'll still get a new friend in me anyway. Okay. And I pinky promise on that. Wow. Thank y'all for your attention and, and whatnot. In the video description, she left her email address for any further inquiries by persons interested in her. Smart idea, Chris. On November Smart 2nd, idea. Christine advertised a new limited 3P set of Amiibos featuring Christian, Christian Sonachu, and Christine at a discounted price of $120 without shipping or handling. Five days later, she made six more Amiibo figurines available for purchase. These were Sonachu and Roshu's three children, Sarah, Christine, and Robbie, a male Jerkop and a female Jane Cop, and a set of the Chandler family, Christine, Barbara, and Bob. On the 10th, she uploaded a gameplay video of Super Smash Bros. featuring a simulated three-way battle between Chris, Barbara, and Bob, Autism, and Chris's three half-siblings. Chris left a message for them in the video description. Hashtag what Joseph Cole Smithy, hashtag Dr. David Allen Chandler, and hashtag Carol Suzanne Chandler. This message for you three. You all have obviously forgotten about your family that y'all should be caring about as well, aside from your own local married families. Alan and Carol, you two have never really appreciated our father. There was time for you two to share time with him before his passing, but no, okay. you all have been selfish mm -hmm. and caught up in your own lives that he gave to us. And Cole, our mother is still alive. I really want you to make amends and get close once again to her before her time runs out. Make amends, that And that's the one gay, sibling Chris. that brings you three, Cole, Alan, and Carol in connection together as family. I want us all to reconnect as family. The distance really bothers me, and I have been feeling ill against y'all for not including me and our mother slash stepmother to two of you. Appreciate your families while there is time. In addition, she made all three of her half-siblings as customized Jerkops and Jankop respectively, wow. and suggested that the same level of customization could be made by request by anyone buying the figurines. On November 11th, Chris made a video displaying the functionality of her amiibos. Hello and good day, this is Christine Chandler coming to you live from home once again, and I wanted to give y'all a little bit of a detail about something that you could do, in addition to the Amiibo figures, actually working on Nintendo 3DS and Wii U with their bonus functionality through the chips in the bottom. You forget one, don't forget one thing aside from be, you don't have to have them for their Amiibo functionality because they are still very collectible and as toys, you can still use your imagination and play with them. Let's take an example of Sanji and Rose here. They're defending the city of Quickville against a horde of jerk cops that came in. Jerk cops and jerk cops. And it's like, you know, they're practically outnumbered. It's like, come on, Rosie, let's go zap these guys back to grab you on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good idea. On. And this horde is taken down. It's like a work of art. This city is safe from another now. herd of jerk cops and jane cops for a day. And let's talk about a moment about autism, the one that's always beating me on the brain. 
<clears throat> yeah, hey, you always beat me up on the brain, you freaking autism. You, I'm stuck with you every day of my life, you know, and it freaking bothers me. You always slow, you slow me down in the head and weigh me down. I can't socialize as well. And not only that, but you break me, make my parents have to send me to all the institutions and all the things and all the therapy and everything, making a, at least a lot of money that could have been used for the betterment of the family and also when actually paying the bills and everything. Jesus, I wonder. <clears throat> this is really fucked up, honestly. I wonder if this is something that Chris would regularly hear from their fucking from their, from their parents, because this is kind of fucked up. Like, I, I, there's no way that he came up with that himself, right? That has to be something where, like the parents would be like, "Oh my god, I can't," because that makes sense. Because there definitely seems to be some kind of self hatred. Yeah, I do think that Chris's parents told him that. I think that's really fucked up. I mean, Jesus Christ. God damn. I certainly wouldn't doubt it. Thank God, mental condition that messed up my brain for a lifetime. Electric edge on power. Then now I'm going to send up a Jill Way. Freaking autism. Yeah. And I win against autism. Freaking autism, yeah, okay. So that's a little bit of the thing. You, that's definitely a fun thing you can do with the amiibo, f with the collectible Sanchi and Roshu figures. Doesn't sound too fun, Chris. And Sounds sad. And my family. My family's the good people. Except for some. Except for some. We could actually be more appreciative of the family that have actually been lost within the past few years, and yet the one that's still alive. Here that go! Come make amends with my mother, that got it. Dog got reviewer. It. I am not who you think I am. I have been possessed by Count Grudgewan. And I fight for him now. What the fuck? Yeah, well, you look like my brother, so take that. You know. We're the good guys. We're going to help restore goodness and everything. Collect you know, after watching this, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't even guess why uh, Chris's brother does not want to have anything to do with him. I couldn't even take a guess if I'm being honest with you. I mean, holy moly! What? Like, what? what would, why? Why wouldn't you want to associate yourself with uh, with uh, Chris after this? You know, like holy moly! This is all. Thank you. Take a few weeks to make. Visit the Quick Fill Shopping Shop on Etsy. After achieving early success in selling off her customized crafts, Christine further pushed her figurines to be sold for profit a practice that she originally considered as merely a hobby, with minimal desire to make money from it. But the figures now had more than just one purpose. Aside from characters contained within her fictional comics, there were also individuals from her personal life, or as she might possibly see it, characters from her life story. Characters which she could use to enact her fantasies of vengeance and triumph. A new reality yeah. where yeah. she can hide from her troubles. A reality in which she can always win a losing battle. Wow. Very deep stuff. Uh, what do I say to that? I agree. I, I agree. I agree. What a beautiful episode. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And another special shout out to all my Patreon and Twitch subs. If you'd like to support this channel further than you already have by just watching the video alone, go down to the links below where you can sub on my Patreon, which will allow you to get your name on this beautiful black wall. <laughs> uh, or you can go to the Twitch page and you can actually use a free Amazon Prime sub, if you have Amazon Prime, to subscribe. Thank you very much, guys. Take care.